However, 10 patients and 10 patients in our trial was 42%. Among the 24 men with benign prostate hyperplasia experienced some degree of erectile dysfunction post operatively. The mean score of erectile function after transfer transition of prostate among both mentioned patients was statistically significantly less than prior to the surgery. It's interesting that those patients, in contrast of other 14, had from time to time not significant but some erectile difficulties pre operating we cannot suppose that erectile dysfunction attributable to transuretral resection of prostate in our study was probably no more common than that in patients with benign prostate hyperplasia treated with watchful waiting. It seems more likely that there is a direct link between erectile dysfunction and transuretral resection of prostate. Even among those patients with benign prostate hyperplasia, whose erectile difficulties preoperatively were insignificant. Some authors observed that careful interviews revealed that nearly two thirds percent of the patients with erectile dysfunction after transuretral resection of prostate believed that ejaculatory dysfunction was completely or partially equal to erectile dysfunction. At the same time, patients who will have erectile dysfunction following prostate surgery often had a higher level of anxiety. And those without extensive preoperative counseling, including information on sexual function, were significantly more likely to complain of erectile dysfunction after transfer election of prostate. We observed retrograde ejaculation in 58% of patients after transfer resection of prostate. It was confirmed by results of comparison of the international index of erectile function characteristic of all patients with benign prostate hyperplasia pre- and post-operatively, as well as by comparison of sexual function of these patients with the control group. It's our belief that erectile dysfunction among some patients was associated with severity of ejaculatory dysfunction after the surgery. Consequently, we can suppose that there is a big risk of transformation of ejaculatory dysfunction after transuretral resection of prostate to erectile dysfunction in patients with benign prostate hyperplasia, especially in case of some degrees of erectile dysfunction preoperative. So, we can conclude that erectile dysfunction attributable to transuretral resection of prostate in patients with benign prostate hyperplasia who had some degree of erectile difficulties preoperatively could be associated with severity of ejaculatory dysfunction after the surgery. Therapy, we think that there is serious doubt regarding transuretral resection of prostate as a general safe procedure for sexual active men. As we see on our study, transuretral uh, resection of prostate was not directly responsible for erectile dysfunction. However, the men with benign prostate hyperplasia who had some degree of erectile difficulties preoperatively might have been considered as a risk group for erectile dysfunction after transuretral resection of prostate. I also would like to add that erectile dysfunction after transuretral resection of prostate among patients with benign prostate hyperplasia probably, probably is elevated by careful preoperative sexual consulting conserving ejaculatory dysfunction. It seems that quite often it's not completely taken into consideration by surgeons, by urologists in Europe, unfortunately. So, to the question, is the trans 
after retinal resection of prostate among patients with benign prostate hyperplasia, risk factor for erectile dysfunction? Answer can be definitely yes, even among the men whose erectile difficulties preoperatively were insignificant.